here we go. Good evening and welcome to the Roseville Electric Utility Integrated Resource Planning Virtual Public Workshop. This is our second public workshop regarding our integrated resource planning process. This is something that we do as a public utility every five years and it's such a critical part of our planning and forecasting for the utility and our community and your feedback is such an important part of that process. So thank you so much for joining us this evening and taking time out of your day. I'm Erin Fry, the Public Information Officer for Roseville Electric. I'm going to go ahead and go over just a few housekeeping items before we move on to our presenters for this evening. First, this meeting will be recorded and posted after the meeting at our IRP website, which is located at roseville.ca.us forward slash IRP. You can also find our previous IRP at that location, as well as our first public workshop and a link to our survey. So please check out that information after tonight's meeting. Second, as I mentioned, your feedback and questions are welcome throughout the presentation. You can do that by clicking on the Q&A button at the top of your screen. It's a little chat icon with the question mark inside. Just click on that, populate your question in the bottom and hit submit. We have a team in the background that'll be answering questions throughout the presentation. And we also have time set aside at the end where we'll be moderating those questions with the presenters who are online this evening. Again, your feedback is so important, so please pass those questions along. We'll also be posting those questions and other frequently asked questions on our website. Again, thank you for being here tonight for the Roseville Electric Utility Integrated Resource Planning Public Workshop. I'm going to go ahead and pass it over tonight to our Roseville Electric Utility Director, Dan Beans, to get things started. Dan? Good evening. I am Dan Beans, Director of Roseville Electric Utility. Thank you for being here tonight. The IRP is a critical planning document that will help us be deliberate in our quest to find affordable, reliable, and sustainable energy for this community. Roseville has and will continue to update the IRP on a regular basis to keep the plan relevant in light of the massive changes facing our industry. California is looking to us to provide all of the energy currently supplied by fossil fuels for cars, trucks, and buildings, as well as continually moving the date closer for increased renewable energy. As we are owned by you, our role is to ensure our values and priorities align with yours and this community at large. This workshop provides that opportunity to make sure we're on the right path. It's important to note that this plan it is just that, it's a plan. All procurement uh, will go through a regular public process through our city council. With that, let's roll up our sleeves, work together and, and try to make the best decisions and position this utility to be successful, providing you with the safe, reliable and affordable power you deserve today and into the future. Thank you, Dan. Uh, my name is Bill Forsyth. I'm the power supply manager with Roseville Electric. So I'll give you a little overview of what we're going to cover tonight. So we'll uh, talk a little bit about who we are. We'll give you some statistics on Roseville Electric. We'll provide a brief background on integrated resource planning and the key elements of resource planning. Some of these we covered in the first public meeting, which took place last fall. Um, we'll talk about the scope and the preliminary findings. And finally, we'll um, tell you how you can help us. So a little bit of background on Roseville Electric. So we've been around for 110 years. Um, in the industry, we're kind of seen as a larger utility. We serve 66,000 customers. 59,000 of those are residential, 7,000 are commercial. We're vertically integrated with 200 employees. Um, we have a peak load of around 370 megawatts, which by chance we hit that peak back in September, September 6th of 2022. 
And on average, we deliver around 1,200 gigawatt hours of electricity to our customers. Our territory is the city of Roseville. Our grid has about 900 miles of distribution system with 90% of that underground, which uh, leads to our very low outage rates. As far as the governance of Roseville, we're overseen by a five member city council. We have a seven member Roseville Public Utility Commission. And uh, we have some of the lowest rates in California and the highest reliability in California. So to give you a little idea of where we are today, um, so we have a very diverse set of resources. It's, it's probably very hard to see from this slide, but that big list that sits on the map, those are all different resources that we have either complete output from or a percent of the outcome through some of our partnerships. These resources are located throughout the state. And uh, in addition to the generation resources we have, we also have transmission rights where we can reach other markets outside the state of California. In an average year, we have uh, quite a bit of large carbon-free hydroelectric power, about 25% of our need. And at present, we're receiving about 40% from various renewable sources. Uh, the remaining um, portion of our portfolio is natural gas or uh, power we purchase on the market. Um, and some of these projects we own, like the power plants in the city of Roseville. Uh, some of these we have very long term contracts for, like with the federal government. And uh, the other assets, we have long term relationships with other public power agencies that are operated and have very similar values to Roseville. So, where we're going, um, this is the, this is why we, do resource planning. Um, in about seven years, we're going to be required to have 60% of our electricity from renewable resources. And by 2045, which you see on the slide, we'll have to have that 60% in addition to another 40% from carbon free. So we'll be required to have all of our power that we serve our customers from carbon free or certified renewable resources. So the IRP, uh, the purpose of doing the IRP is we put a plan together to see how we can meet those requirements while balancing our customers, uh, the reliability, the reliable service we provide, the affordable rates we provide while maintain, maintaining compliance with these regulations. So where are we going? Um, the previous slide that showed the composition of our, our portfolio, where it needs to be in 2045, is the result of, of all these various laws uh, passed by the state of California. Um, and these regulations, so you're looking at about two decades worth of regulations, and they're driving the whole industry uh, down this path of lower carbon and eventually zero carbon. And just to give you a, a little example, back in 2002, uh, SB 1078 was signed into law, and that was the first renewable portfolio bill. So that started us down this path. And that bill had a mandate of 20% renewable resources by 2017. Um, one thing we've noticed is just three years later in 2005, SB 107 was passed, which accelerated that 20% not by 2017, but we had to meet it by 2010. In 2011, SBX1-2 was passed, and this was a bill meant to be, it's meant to expedite um, the state's progress towards the RPS even further. This time they took that 20% that was moved to 2010 and said, in addition, we'll do 25% by 2016 and 33% by 2020. Then a couple of years ago, we had SB 350, which uh, required uh, integrated resource plans to be done every um, five years. And shortly after that was Senate Bill 100, again, further increasing the renewable levels. And that is the kind of the final piece that got us to these current requirements of having to 
be zero carbon by 2045. I guess the big takeaway that we've found and that we incorporate into our resource planning is uh, we plan for the laws that are on the books, but it's not surprising to see that um, by the time we get to the next resource plan, they'll change and probably be even more aggressive and accelerate even further. And with that, I'll turn it over to Riley, who's going to talk about integrated resource planning. Good evening, everyone. My name is Riley Kelly. I'm an electric resource planner here at Roseville Electric. Uh, tonight I'll be talking a bit about what integrated resource planning is, and I'll also be providing an overview of the scope of this project. So an integrated resource plan, or an IRP for short, is a comprehensive planning document designed to guide long-term resource procurement. It ensures that a utility meets its goals and legislative mandates. In accordance with Senate Bill 350, the city of Roseville must complete an IRP once every five years. The previous IRP was completed in 2018. It received city council approval, CEC approval, and is currently available online for reference. In addition to meeting state requirements, an IRP aids a utility by providing a procurement roadmap for years to come. In short, better planning leads to better decision-making. For over 100 years, Roseville's primary goals have been to maintain affordable rates, provide reliable service, and maintain compliance with legislative requirements. Inherently, these three goals are in direct conflict with one another. Our objective is to strike a balance and construct a resource portfolio that can adhere to each of these goals, but one that is tailored to our customers' preferences. As a part of this IRP, we studied many different supply scenarios under a variety of demand scenarios to assess the pros and cons of each. Our target is to hit the small section in the middle of this diagram. Roseville Electric is a publicly owned utility, and as such, we strive to operate in a manner that reflects the values of our residents. You all collectively have a right to guide the utility into the future. To engage our residents in this effort, we developed a survey aimed at identifying the key priorities as determined by our citizens, the results of which are shown here. Ultimately, we had 57 responses to our survey. The survey results indicated that there was an overwhelming desire for high reliability and low cost amongst our residents. Next on the list was achieving a low carbon presence. In terms of adhering to legislative requirements, our residents vastly preferred to simply meet mandates and not to exceed them. When asked about achieving a low carbon fleet, the majority of our residents indicated that they would not want to pay more than 5% in additional costs for a decarbonized generation mix. The survey also showed that there was no preference in terms of resource location. This next slide shows the timeline that was presented at the first public meeting. Our first meeting centered around assessing our needs as a utility. Since then, we have proceeded to develop resource portfolios, conducted thorough analyses on these portfolios, and identified the optimal resource mix to meet our needs. The final step of this project will be to compile a report detailing our findings, present the results to the Roseville Public Utilities Commission, and take the report to Roseville City Council for approval. Ultimately, we are targeting submission of the report to the CEC by the end of this year. Following submission to the CEC, staff can then begin to implement the resource procurement plan identified in the IRP. So now to talk a little bit about the scope of this project. The planning horizon that we evaluated for this study was 2023 to 2035. This study focused on four primary demand scenarios. Our base plan. This plan is what we expect to have happen given the best available information. Next, we looked at a customer choice plan. This scenario modeled increased usage of energy efficient products. It assumed higher integration of rooftop solar and more mild temperatures across the planning horizon. 
The purpose of this scenario was to drive demand down so that we could identify the optimal resource mix for a system in which demand is lower than what we expect in our base case. This ensures that if the adoption of energy efficient products accelerates, that we do not over procure resources, purchasing more than we need to to serve our customers. Third on the list is our electrification plan. This scenario assumes a system that has high demand. This means more electric vehicles charging from our system, increased electrification of appliances and machinery, as well as more extreme temperatures driving air conditioning demand. And last on the list is the accelerated green plan. This scenario assumes that all of the existing decarbonization requirements have to be achieved 10 years earlier than the current deadline of 2045. This scenario seeks to address the legislative and regulatory uncertainty that is inherent in our industry. Over the planning horizon, we are forecasting an increase in both annual system demand and instantaneous peak demand. The customer choice scenario shows the lowest levels of demand and the electrification scenario shows the most extreme. The green scenario demand is the same as the base plan and will be discussed later in this presentation. The growth in our demand can be as high as 15% over the planning horizon in both annual demand and peak demand if high levels of electrification materialize. There are a variety of technologies that produce energy, uh, all of which have their advantages and disadvantages. For this study, Roseville limited, limited its evaluation of resources to only those that have a well-vetted history of performance and that are well positioned to meet California's requirements. I'd like to give a bit of background on the technologies that we looked into and the characteristics of each of those resources. So first, we have hydroelectric, which utilizes the force of moving water to spin a turbine and generate electricity. This type of project is very location dependent and many of the possible projects are already built out. So there are very few opportunities for new build projects. A large benefit to this type of generator is that the output can be controlled. It can be used to follow load or make up for when other resources are not generating. Hydro also provides needed ancillary services like spin and non-spin used for reliability purposes. Per California law, not all hydroelectricity is classified as renewable, but it is considered a carbon-free resource. Next on the list, we have photovoltaic solar, which generates electricity by absorbing sunlight, using it to move electrons. It can be sited nearly anywhere, which is a significant advantage. The disadvantage is that solar is intermittent in nature. It only generates when the sun shines and it is easily interruptible by cloud coverage. Next on the list, we have wind. So wind technology generates electricity by utilizing the force of wind to spin a turbine. These generators are very location dependent as they need to be sited where there is a significant supply of fuel or wind. Similar to solar, this technology is highly dependent on an intermittent fuel source, and they are considered renewable technology. Next on the list, we have geothermal, which leverages underground heat to create steam, which ultimately spins a turbine. It is location dependent and produces at base load, or in other words, it stays online at full output around the clock. Another key resource is thermal. Thermal generation generates electricity by using the energy from the combustion of fuel to spin a turbine. Thermal units can be sited nearly anywhere and are controllable. The downside is that many of these plants rely on natural gas as a fuel source, which emits pollutants and is not renewable or carbon free. A lot of focus in the industry is being directed towards implementing and scaling alternative fuel sources, such as renewable natural gas and hydrogen. These alternative fuels also have their downsides in that they're more costly and difficult to manage. And lastly, we have storage. Storage is not a generating resource in and of itself. It simply moves energy from other sources to different periods during the day. Storage technology can be sited nearly anywhere. It is controllable 
but it is often limited to a four hour duration, which can be challenging on consecutive days of high demand, like during the summer months. Storage is also very expensive relative to other technology. Using the resources just described, four portfolios comprising different combinations of generators were studied. First, we looked at a 100% solar portfolio, which assumes that all newly installed resources will be utility scale solar. Next, we looked at a heavy solar portfolio, which assumes that the majority of the newly installed capacity is solar, approximately 70%. The remaining is made up of geothermal, hydroelectricity, and wind resources. We also evaluated a heavy wind portfolio. Like the heavy solar portfolio, this assumes that wind is the dominant resource accounting for approximately 70% of the newly installed capacity. And finally, we looked at a balanced portfolio, which assumes the newly installed capacity is more evenly divided amongst the technology types. Our evaluation process consisted of identifying our needs and goals, gathering inputs, such as demand forecasts, generation profiles, estimated costs, existing hedges, and future market prices, and then constructing the resource portfolios that were mentioned on the previous slide. Once we gathered all of the inputs, we processed them using our stochastic modeling software, which produces a distribution of likely outcomes given the parameters that we have established. Staff then analyzed and ranked the model results based on key metrics that were agreed upon by management. For our evaluation, we applied a consistent scoring methodology. We used the same assumptions, the same key metrics throughout the scoring process, and we computed scores for each of the portfolios based on a standardized approach. We developed a series of key metrics, which will be discussed in the subsequent section of this presentation. Each portfolio received a score in each of the key metric areas. The visual below is a graphical representation of how each portfolio performed towards a given metric from low to high. In the next section, we will discuss the relative scoring of the portfolios for each of the key metrics that we identified. And with that, I'd like to hand it off to our project manager, Brian Shinstock, to walk through our findings and recommendation. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm Brian Shinstock, also part of the IRP team. Now that we covered who we are, why we are doing an IRP, and what with the scope, let's get into the preliminary findings. Our preliminary findings tie to our goals of reliability, affordability, and compliance. Each goal has metrics. Reliability is defined as keeping the lights on. To meet reliability, you need capacity, energy, flex, and diversity. All these will be reviewed and scored, and we'll explore each of those categories in the next slides. All of the evaluation slides are set up similar where the top section uh, will list the category, and then the graphic will show the key metrics that are tied to our modeling. And then on the right, you'll see the scoring rubric, scoring, and in the blue, major takeaways. So for this one, we're looking at capacity. Capacity ensures enough resources are available to meet the peak or highest load. In this case, we're looking at the year, and this also includes a 20% safety factor. Each resource has what's called an effective load carrying capability. And what this means is um, the amount that that resource will be available during that peak time. Solar and wind's effective load carrying capability has continued to drastically diminish and is expected to continue to degrade. Therefore, we took a conservative approach and only included capacity if these intermittent resources are paired with storage. The black line in the graph is our need Again, this includes our safety factor, and the columns are the total capacity for each year. If the column is at or above the line, capacity is met. If below, there is a shortfall. 
If you look over to the right where the scoring is, you can see that the balanced portfolio best meets our capacity needs, therefore scored the highest in this category. Moving on to energy. Energy ensures enough resources are available at the time they are needed. Displayed in this graph is an example of a day. The black line represents the load or need, and the colored areas are the resources. From the bottom to top, we have geo, hydro, wind, and solar. Each resource has their own generation profile or shape. As you can see, there are times there are not enough resources that stack up to meet that black load line. You can see that in hours ending one through five, and then again in 15 through 24. There are also times these resources are above the load line, generating more than the load. When we studied that uh, horizon from 2023 to 2023, 2035, uh, we saw that the wind and the balanced portfolios best met the instantaneous need. Therefore, they scored the highest in this metric. Flex ensures resources can adjust to the need either moving up or down. When a customer turns on their lights, we have to respond by increasing generation. As noted earlier, certain resources are controllable and others are not. There are times resources will stop producing when needed, which increases the flex requirement requiring other resources to respond at a faster rate. We want a portfolio that best matches our load as we are a load serving entity. The chart shows the 100% solar portfolio, that's that red line. Um, there are times that the resources have to move down 35 megawatts. You can see that at hour ending nine, and again at hour ending 10. And then later in the day, as solar falls off, um, the flex requirement goes up 40 megawatts, and again, another 40 megawatts. Moving 40 megawatts every day for those hours can cause issues, especially if you do not have controllable resources. There are real concerns meeting flex, and we do need controllable resources with the ability to move. As you can see, the 100% solar has the highest average flex movement, whereas wind and balance are flatter profiles throughout an average day. Diversity ensures resource types and locations are diverse to limit locational impacts, such as wildfires, transmission line outages, and even weather patterns like cloud coverage and possible future regulatory changes. We don't want to be too reliant on one technology. Hydro, wind, and geothermal are location dependent. They need to be around the fuel source. Solar and the balanced portfolio scored well in this category because it is diverse both in resource type and location. Moving on to our next goal of affordability. Uh, affordability is providing services at a rate customers can afford. To meet affordability, both costs and risk were evaluated. First, looking at our cost, our goal is to provide affordable rates. This cost is only for the variable power supply cost, not all of electric. It does not include other electric departments or fixed fees. Today's portfolio is the cheapest option moving forward. However, it will not meet compliance. Throughout this whole process, we want to be transparent. This required change to our portfolio will have an increase in cost. For the whole study period, these portfolios have an average increase from 1 to 4%. In other words, a one-time 1 to 4% increase would cover the expected cost increase using the best available assumptions used in this study. The 100% solar portfolio has the lowest cost throughout the study period. Um, if batteries are needed, like we noted earlier, it drastically increases the cost. A four hour battery is around $17 per kilowatt month. So to back that into a one megawatt project, that would increase the cost around $200,000 a year. Looking at risk, just like other utilities, Roseville Electric participates in market purchases. There is a risk of market price increase. These dollars 
are the dollars shown are millions of dollars per year. And in this case, each load scenario is shown. The customer choice has the lowest load and the least amount of risk, and electrification has the highest. The 100% solar would have uh, $3 million per year of risk for the base plan. That's that uh, light blue box. The key here is to find resources that meet load with little to no over and under generation because this reduces the amount of energy sold and purchased into the market. If we can limit deviation, it translates into limiting financial market exposure. And finally, compliance. Compliance is defined by meeting or exceeding the state and federal requirements. In this case, the renewable and carbon-free requirements. Looking at uh, renewable, this graph shows today's portfolio under SB 100 requirements. The line is the required renewable requirement and the columns is the renewable energy in our portfolio today. It shows that we will not meet this requirement beginning in 2026. That's where our shortfall first occurs. All study portfolios are designed to meet the renewable requirement of acquiring renewable resources when needed. Since all portfolios meet the requirement, they all have the same scoring. Carbon. All utilities are provided a certain amount of allowances to emit. Um, these are measured in metric tons of carbon dioxide. By 2045, we're required to be zero carbon or have zero emissions. Roseville's portfolio continues to be below the allowances and is expected to continue to be below at least until 2030. Allocations after 2030 are unknown and being worked on by the California Air Resource Board. It's important to note that electric vehicles and electrification will decrease the overall emissions, yet they will have an adverse effect on the electric sector as both increase load, which in turn increases emissions. Currently, there are no offsets or credits for the electric sector. Now that we've looked at the metrics, what are some of the key takeaways? To start, to start we should note some disclaimers. All options have cost and risk. Our job is to limit both by using mature technologies that are scaled and timed appropriately, along with not being the first, as it typically incurs the most cost and least reliability. Roseville, Roseville's portfolio needs to change and decisions need to be made. We also know that doing nothing is also a decision. We know the future will change, and this IRP uses the best available assumptions, but there are many moving parts, many of which we don't have control, like the state and federal regulations, energy markets, and project cost. From a reliability perspective, there are real concerns with meeting reliability, both for capacity and flex. The resources in the portfolio need to work when needed and be able to move up and down to account for any variation. Batteries, while useful, uh, are expensive and expected to continue to be expensive. They also only provide a benefit for a limited time. Most charge and discharge chimes are only four hours, which means they cannot help with issues lasting longer than that window. Lastly, being green is expensive. Noted earlier, an accelerated green plan was studied. This plan moved the green 100% zero carbon goal forward by 10 years to 2035. It's expected at a minimum that would increase our overall cost by $15 million per year or around 150 million from 2035 to 2045. Each score from the previous slides are summarized here where the portfolio studied are in the columns and the rows are the categories reviewed. The red low bars indicate a low score, whereas the high or near full green bars are more favorable. For instance, the 100% solar scenario did not perform well in reliability, receiving a low capacity score as it was not met, leaving a concerning short position, as well as the low energy score, producing the most energy midday when it is not needed. 100% solar did score the highest in the cost category 
However, if paired with a battery, it will significantly increase the cost. As you can see, the battery of the balanced portfolio best meets all the goals of reliability, affordability, and compliance. Again, here's another look at the scoring for all the portfolios. The balance, which is a mix of hydro, geo, wind, and solar, perform favorable across all scenarios. It is the lowest cost scenario that meets our other needs of reliability and compliance. It is the preferred plan that will be used for our planning document. That preferred plan for technology and timing for the balanced portfolio is shown here. So we have the years uh, across the x-axis and then the resource type um, when, when we want to try to acquire that resource. This plan informs how we will begin assessing resource investment and contracts. By selecting a plan, it informs our decision making, and this is a general path going forward for the timing, type, and size. We plan to issue solicitations in these timeframes. It may look a little bit different, but this guides our plan. In addition to the timing of new resources, Roseville should do the following actions. Um, if we look at these, uh, so A1, pursue additional hydro resources as they become available and extend current hydro resource agreements. Um, both of these are important, like we noted earlier, that uh, there's not any new hydro being built in California. So to have hydro in your portfolio, you either need to extend your current agreements or pursue new ones where contracts fall off. A3, pursue opportunities to increase, increase Roseville's available import capacity. Right now, we can only um, import so much energy at a time. There's a limit to that, and we can do the right uh, infrastructure to increase that limit and provide more options. Four, engage in forums impacting PG&E's natural gas transportation cost. We use PG&E's uh, infrastructure to uh, deliver gas to our thermal plants, and that cost has gone up, and it's a very volatile cost, or can be. So our way to combat that is to work in forums and with other agencies on reducing that cost. Utilize advanced metering infrastructure data to assess new programs and enhance system operations. So the more data that we have and the more granularity that we have, um, we can see uh, customer usage and then develop programs that both help the customer and the utility having this information. Develop and implement a broader load reduction program to aid during emergency grid conditions. Last September, um, as you recall, we had the heat wave and some of you might have received text to reduce your energy consumption. Although that worked, we, um, we even, even California want better ways to um, reduce load than sending out text. So we want to look into different avenues and um, stuff that won't directly affect customers but still reduce load. A7, pursue the development of local generating resources. We know that local resources provide more reliability they're closer to our sink and um, they provide voltage and frequency support. So if we can locate those closer to us, they'll help our reliability. Continue to conduct maintenance on generation units and upgrades to the distribution system to account for increased, more volatile loads. Um, this is just good utility practice, maintaining your equipment, especially the equipment that you use. The future continues to evolve, therefore we need to monitor uh, state and federal legislation and regulation. Um, as you can see, the, the new green goals directly impact us, so we need to uh, follow those and other um, new legislation to know what's happening and what's coming so we can adapt quicker. Uh, two, we also need to continue to monitor um, and optimize Roseville's capacity portfolio. As you saw on that earlier graph, uh, meeting our capacity need, um, you know, we're, we're pretty close to that, that line. And then there are shoulder months where we use a lot less load and um, we can sell those attributes and monetize it. And then that comes back and reduces our customers' rates. So we wanna continue to monitor that and the pricing with that. Monitor new green 
or low emission fuel sources that can utilize existing infrastructure and continue to monitor thermal technologies and implement low carbon solutions to extend the life of existing reliability infra infrastructure. Um, as discussed earlier, there's um, you know, some research and some movement behind new fuels that can possibly be utilized for our existing thermal assets. We wanna monitor those because that could be the solution to reducing our emissions. Continue to optimize Roseville's renewable portfolio to reduce the cost of compliance. Again, we wanna meet compliance, but we wanna meet it at the lowest cost possible because then that translates to lower rates for you. So we wanna to continue to monitor those prices um, and strike at optimal times. Monitor new markets for continued liquidity and best utilize assets. And we also wanna work with our balancing authority partners to ensure access to markets that maximize portfolio benefits with maintaining local autonomy. Uh, we join the California Independent System Operators Energy and Balance Market in March of 2021. Um, this is a very liquid market. We've had great success with that. Um, now the California um, Independent System Operators doing a day ahead market. We want to monitor that, see how that could work for us or with us, and we want to do that with our balancing authority. In addition, we want to explore. Um, the, the first one there is a mouthful, but basically all the modeling that we do today um, works really well, but there are newer models that provide more granular data. So you want to explore what those can do for us, how much value it could add, um, and see if that is beneficial to the utility. Number two, we want to align our head strategy with increased exposure to carbon and other environmental markets. We have a very robust head strategy, head strategy right now that we abide by, but uh, with the increased exposure to carbon, um, we wanna look and explore ways that we can fold that into our head strategy. Research and explore opportunities to increase transmission to the Pacific Northwest given regional market developments. Uh, just I talked about earlier with the energy and balance market, there's markets in the Pacific Northwest, markets plus um, that, you know, we might want to explore looking into because those might um, help us be more liquid too and provide some benefit to us and our assets and more transmission to the Pacific Northwest also allows for um, lower carbon power because there's a lot of large hydro up there. And finally, monitor system requirements for intermittency and implement a storage solution at the appropriate time. Uh, storage is expensive. I, I know we've said that a couple times, but it may be needed um, with how much intermittency um, our grid might have. And we want to implement that at the appropriate time and size. Doing all three things, we feel this is the best position uh, for Roseville Electric today and into the future. As a reminder, the IRP is a planning document and each procurement from the preferred plan will be brought before council for approval. Our next steps we touched on earlier, but you know, reviewing those um, in June or July, we wanna go to the Public Utility Commission and then in summer, go to council. By the end of this year, we'll submit the uh, report to the California Energy Commission for their approval. And then from there, begin implementing the preferred plan. And we'll also want to monitor and update for any future changes. Uh, lastly, outreach. This is our second public meeting. And again, we're going to go to the Public Utility Commission and Council. We also have a dedicated website with the link there. This video uh, recording will be posted there as well as the, the first public meeting and other information about the IRP. And we also had to have a dedicated email electric irp at roseville.ca.us if you have questions comments please send those to that email address and we will be sure to get back to you with that thank you for attending the irp public workshop um, we value your feedback thank you thank you brian riley and bill for that great presentation 
Before we log off this evening, I do know we have a number of attendees on. Once again, a reminder, we do have a Q&A session. If there are any questions about what you heard tonight or the planning process overall, you can click on the Q&A link at the top of your screen and enter that question in. We'd be happy to pass that along to our presenters and get that answered. Again, as Brian mentioned, the recording from tonight will be posted on our integrated resource planning website, which can be located at roseville.ca.us forward slash IRP. On that site, you can also find our previous IRP that was approved by Council and the CEC. You can also find a recording from our 2022 public workshop and additional resources. So that's a great place for you to stop and get up to date on the entire planning process for our 2023 outreach. So seeing no other questions this evening, again, thank you for spending time with us this evening and joining us for our second public workshop for Roseville Electric Utilities Integrated Resource Planning Process. Have a great evening. With any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to our dedicated email address at electricirp at roseville.ca.us or visit our website at roseville.ca.us forward slash IRP.